Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Uh, my wife and I, Cindy, just came back from a couple months sailing on our our 48-foot sailboat, the Spirit of Adventure, uh, a gift that the Lord's provided for our ministry. And we want to invite you. Come join us if you want. Uh, go sail with us. Um, but uh, our guest today, Dr. Ray Garendi, uh, someone who doesn't need an introduction, a voice that you're going to recognize, and a man that I just always love the, the chance to, to spend time with him in person or, or on the radio. We're going to get right back and talk about heroic fatherhood with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I get to show you, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, uh, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Subtitled, based on Ray Garendi's life, Dr. Ray Garendi's life. Uh, but the book has been out now for about five months. It's been bumping around in the top 10, top 20 uh, for Christian men's books, so that's for Protestants and Catholics, so that's pretty good. And it, it just really uh, is, I love this book. People are really responding to it because it's kind of a gritty look at what it means to be a man. Um, like two men would talk. You know, it's not soft. It's just real, very real stuff. And, uh, and uh, it talks about um, the grit it takes, but also the grace that it takes to really be a, a man of virtue in, in the life today. So go check out my book at any bookstore. I think it's in the Barnes and Nobles and all, all Christian bookstores. Or you can go to Sophie Institute or our website, deepadventure.com, or go to Amazon. Oh, I think EWTN has it, too. Okay, we got Dr. Ray with us in the house. Got over that fast. I usually go about five, four, four minutes, Ray. Hey, man, I, 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 this man, I love you so much. I don't care what I say about you when I'm out in public. You know what? You know what I usually say about you when I'm in public, Ray. I hope you say what I've written. No, they'll say they'll say uh, they'll say. Uh, oh yeah, Doctor Ray will bring it, bring you up. You know, uh, someone will bring you up, or and I'll say, oh, that rookie, amateur. <laughs> By the way, Bear, I almost didn't do this interview with you. Um, I was very offended. Uh, I looked over your wonderful book. I know when you sent it to me, and I kept thinking, there is not a picture of me anywhere in this book. It goes without saying, Ray. It goes totally without saying. Hey, okay. before we get started, we got to do a dad joke. You got one? I got one. Dad joke. Yes. You, you know, have the somebody, worst jokes of anybody I know, so I want to hear I, a bad okay. dad joke, okay? Somebody came in last night and stole my limbo trophy. And I thought, how low can you go? <laughs> oh, that's so that's so bad. Hey, let me ask you this: You're 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 a learned man, do a lot of thinking. How do you how do you think the unthinkable? People panic when they think the unthinkable. Father Larry Richards now, told now, me. Now, this. now, now, go ahead, go okay. ahead. Okay, all right, all right. I see what you're saying. Okay, now, you you this is this is a dad joke. But okay, then we'll get okay, into I Father Larry. We'll go Father Larry right after this because that's going to be good. It's a good lead-in. How do you think the unthinkable? You think it with an iceberg. Ah, uh, I'm leaving. That's painful. My people, my people got a hold of you. <laughs> Bear, I'm getting so big, my people got people. <laughs> Tell me about what Father Larry Richards said about the unthinkable. He said that sometimes in his holiest moments, the nastiest thoughts come into his head because he feels like that's when Satan makes his move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the unthinkable. I get a lot of folks, Bear, that'll come in and say, these thoughts pop into my head and they're awful, they're blasphemous, they're vicious, they're impure, they're nasty. I don't want them. I fight them. I panic. And you know what I tell them? Just flow with them. You're, you're not giving your will to those thoughts. Anything can pop into your head at any time. And if you panic about it, they're more likely to intrude. Simply mm -hmm. just like a bullfighter. You take that cape and you pull it aside and the thoughts come in and out. God knows you don't want to think them and they go away. I love that. That's exactly right. Now, I'm, you know, I'm trained as a ninja. Um, I know you'd beat me at arm wrestling, but, I, but we have these different modes of fighting. And one of them is called uh, the, the wind mode. 
And that's where you let the opponent just pass. You know, as he passes by, you make sure he hurts himself. But you just let him. T- it's exactly like bullfighting. You let that. You, you just. It's coming in. I just let it out. And if the more you concentrate on it, the more it gives that. You know, the more it, sometimes it gives it more space in your brain. So just let the thought come and let it go, like like a someone uh, you know driving by in a car. It's it's not you. It's the enemy. And just let it go. Just let it go. Well, when I do martial arts competitions. Uh, they usually let me go because I just fall on my own. They don't even have, I don't even have to be doing a move. I just fall. You know what it so is? It's so good. It's so good that you know how to roll so good. I've noticed in your martial arts, mostly you're doing the falling, but you've trained a lot in it, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me put it to you this way. I play softball still, mm-hmm. and it takes now two singles to score me from third. <laughs> well, okay, well, I'll tell you what. I'm such a good golfer. I'm going to tell you what happened to me the other day. Then we better get serious. But okay. I was out golfing, and I'm sitting, I'm, 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 I'm about to swing, my driver, and one of those rich people, snooty people, and those, those golf carts rolls up, and he goes, Sir, you're hitting from the ladies' tee. And I just kind of shrugged it off, you know, and I'm getting all ready again, uh, and I, I'm just about to swing. Guy that, you know, and he, and he says, Sir, you're swinging from the ladies' tee. And it's really hard, you know, when you're concentrating and you're all ready. I go again. I just wave him off, and I go to swing again. He says it again. You're swinging from the ladies' tee. And I say, stop bothering. I'm trying to take my third swing, <laughs> and I messed it up. That's <laughs> okay. I know what you're trying. All right. I'm trying, to, I'm, we... trying to hit, I'm trying to hit the ball. Yeah, okay. I really blew it. I'm trying to take my third stroke. It's because the first one, every golfer knows you hit that ball off the tee, and it rolls 10 feet onto the ladies' tee, and... Anyway, I know okay, I just, work just on one it. more week before we get serious. Okay, I was with my wife last night. We were in a restaurant. There was a lady two booths over, and she looked like she'd been drinking pretty heavily. And I said to my wife, I know her, I dated her in college, and they tell me that after I broke up with her, she started drinking and she hasn't quit. And my wife said, Hard to believe somebody could celebrate that long. <laughs> okay, come on. I can't believe I blew that joke so bad. I don't know if anybody listening even got it. Rookie, amateur. It. Yeah, amateur. Okay, so let's talk about heroic fatherhood. What a great title. That's that. I know you have you've you've had two books come out this year. I think right. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, but this is the one we want to. I want to talk with you about heroic fatherhood. Tell us all about it. Tell tell us what we can learn from from the book and what it takes to be heroic. I talk father. to a lot of guys, Bear, and they will admit that their wife is the spiritual leader of their household. And some of them like it that way. Let her do the spiritual Mm -hmm. heavy lifting. I'll go along for the ride. You know, mom, mom gets people ready for prayer time. Mom is the one who sets up the time for mass, all of that. Okay, I don't resist. I'm there with her, but they don't take an active lead. Are you familiar with that survey that came out some time ago? And they talked about if mom and dad take the kids to church, there's, that's the highest chance that the kids will be in church when they're adults. If, if mom alone takes the kids to church without dad, it plummets. It absolutely plummets. It drops to 20%, 30%. If dad alone takes the kid to church, it is nearly equal to both parents taking the kid to church that the kid will be in church when he's an adult. That's spiritual leadership. But, you know, I'll tell you what, I, I went through, I don't really talk about this, but I went through a cancer, and then I tore two different muscles loose that had to be reconnected. And uh, during that time, my wife, Cindy, she just stepped up and she did so many things for me. And then when I was feeling better, it was so easier just to keep to keep letting her do that. And finally, I had a conversation with her. Said, "I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm strong. I'm back. You just got to let me do this for myself now." Because she was just taking care of me. A, a good woman will do that. But men, we need After to not four just. Four years. You finally told her that, right? Yeah, I said I have been better now for three and a half years. And no, but I mean, there, I I found myself saying, "Well, she seems to want to do it. Let her do it." Well, that's not. I finally had to have a conversation with her. I'm, I'm stronger. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm surfing. I'm golf. I'm doing everything again. Let me do. Don't, don't 
don't do these things that are as in Hawaii we call it kuleana that's my area of responsibility but if as men we get lazy and well if she wants to do it let her do it you know and uh, that's a that's a sin of omission let me tell you one of my biggest regrets as a dad bear when the kids were at home we had at one point 10 kids under 12 and when I would go to bed I would say my prayers under the covers I would just lay in bed covered up saying my prayers the kids had no idea I was saying my prayers. They thought dad was just in bed. If I had it to do over again, Bear, I would kneel next to that bed mm. so they could see their old man saying mm. his prayers on his knees. That's one of my mm. biggest regrets. That's wonderful. The lead by example. We're talking with Dr. Ray Garendi. We apologize for the terrible bad dad jokes. Your, 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 your bad dad jokes were actually kind of good. Mine was a total flop. But... Um, can't, we can't talk about fatherhood without doing a few dad jokes. When we come back, we're going to talk with Dr. Ray more about his book, Heroic Fatherhood. Ray, where can people find you? Where can they find the book? If, if that, now, that book cuts across, it costs across a number of my titles, Bear. I have a title called Thinking Like Jesus, The Psychology of a Faithful Disciple. I have a book called Jesus the Master Psychologist. And then my most recent book is for parents and dads, especially standing strong good discipline makes great teens and all three of those are discounted and signed on my website drray.com i love it it's real simple drray.com we'll be right back with more of the bear wasnick adventure now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wasnick Adventure. My sons, uh, Shane and Josh, have worked so hard on Long Ride Home. Uh, four seasons are available up on EWTN, where we ride motorcycles across the United States. And the last season, which is airing now on EWTN, um, was filmed here in Hawaii, 11 episodes. But guess what? It's also on Prime Video, and it's also, we just now opened it up so that you can go to our YouTube site, Bear Wasnick uh, Spirit of Adventure YouTube site, and you will see... Uh, not only all the radio shows and so many other things, the Ocean Sunrise Catechisms, but you will be able to access Long Ride Home at no cost. And uh, and also, um, I should say that we have these really cool things now. If you subscribe to our newsletter or you subscribe to our, our YouTube site, they've worked on about 60 of these 60-second shorts where they're taking short excerpts from my book and I'm reading them. 
and they've t made video shorts that you can share uh, excerpt from my new book 12 rules for manliness where have all the cowboys gone and they're using ai and animation tools to make it look really cool and something that everyone uh can can identify with but it's specifically made to also reach that younger audience the young the younger men and women so uh, go to bear wasnick and it'll say bear wasnick spirit of adventure and subscribe <clears throat> and um and then um uh, share those videos. Dr. Ray is in the house. Uh, I don't, I, it's so interesting. You don't even have to say his last name. We, everyone knows who, who Dr. Ray is. We've been talking about heroic virtue and the leadership role that a man needs to play in raising his, his children. I'm just leaving it open for you. Okay, my friend. There are some words I hate as a psychologist. I absolutely hate them. And one of those words is toxic. Um, can you hear that uh, background of machine? I thought I unplugged it. My wife was not here, but did you pick it up? No, what was it? Okay, good. You didn't hear it. The word toxic is flung around by therapists all over the place. And what it has done, Bear, is it has taken what was once considered healthy, strong manhood and made it toxic masculinity. What they've done, instead of saying abusive manhood is toxic manhood, they've said the characteristics, the virtue, leadership, strength, protectiveness is now toxic. And a Christian man has to look at that word and realize it's been co-opted mm -hmm, by exactly. the secular leaders of our culture mm -hmm. and used to, as a club to beat us into our place rather than allowing us to be strong, protective, and helpful for those we love. And you know, and the thing is, is we'll blame society for doing that. Fact is, we let it happen. We let it happen because right. because we didn't respond when the when the when those things started to come to us. We just thought our role was to be the nice guy, and we just let it happen. You know, in, in my new book, Twelve Rules for Manliness. You know, I'm, I'm speaking at the Tampa Bay event uh, this coming weekend. This is, is going to show after I speak at the Tampa Bay Man, Men's Conference. And they wanted me to talk about Catholic masculinity. And I said, no. I'll talk about Catholic manliness. And they love that. The word for man is uh, the word ver in Latin. It means, it means virtue. But there's another word for man, too, from homo sapien. The word homo means humu. It comes from the word dirt. So a man, a real, a real man, that's why I call it manliness. It's masculinity. So many things have been co-opted by, the, by the, that woke culture. But manliness, a man who's virtuous and a man who's gritty. But it can't be grit alone. It has to be grit and grace. We have to be men that are you know, being, being led and being filled and being given the graces of the Holy Spirit to do it. So yeah, let's not use masculinity anymore. That word's been stolen. Let's just word that, but let's, you know, when I spoke on the college campuses in Montana, one of the campuses wanted to shut me down just on the basis of the title of the book. And they, 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 they tried to shut me down. The president wrote a special letter saying we don't agree necessarily with what he's saying. And then the professor sat in the back waiting for me to say something stupid, which of course you know me. I did I didn't. <laughs> I know I say I didn't though, thankfully, but. It tells you leagues. As a psychologist, I learn a lot from people by what they don't allow. Mm -hmm. It tells you leagues when you try to go to a campus and you want to say something and present a perspective. By the way, a Catholic campus. Uh, that doesn't surprise me, Barry. Yeah, yeah. You want to present a perspective that perhaps is out of their comfort zone, if you want to use mm -hmm. another cliche, Mm -hmm. And they won't allow it. Mm -hmm. Now, in therapy, when somebody says, I cannot tolerate that, I won't allow it. And it's not anything immoral and it's not anything hurtful. What they're really saying to you is, I'm too insecure to allow that perspective. Mm. I have to stop it because I can't handle it. And that's mm. what they said on that college campus. They can't handle hearing something they don't agree with. Right. And, and when they did come, there were three, three ladies, and that's what's happened to the college campuses. They've been taken over by the feminist, not, not, not femininity, but by that feminist sort of, um, of uh, woke sort of culture. And, uh, and, I, and I see that today that everyone uh, is telling men, you need to be a nice guy. Well, Jesus wasn't nice, you know. He took a whip into the, <laughs> into the outer court of the temple, and when he sent his disciples out, 
he said, if you don't have a sword, get one. When he said, if someone hits you on the cheek, slaps you on the cheek, offer to him the other, that wasn't a man of weakness. That's like someone takes a swing at you and you just go, is that all you got? That's it. You, you, can't, you can't offend me. Right. Well said. And, and yeah, and Paul said, love does not take offense. And that's all they do is take offense. You don't, you don't know what they're going to take offense at. You've got to kind of figure it out each week, which is the new thing you've got to be careful of, you know? A Christian man, since you brought it up so well, Bear, should be unoffendable. Mm. And by that I mean when people say things about us, they accuse us. Unfairly, now we have to be objective. As it does, does their accusation have merit? That's mm -hmm. the one thing I always say. The only thing I have to worry about when you say something about me is whether it's true or not. Mm. If it's not true, I don't need to be offended by it because you can say anything at any time about me anywhere. Mm -hmm. The second thing is, when I get offended, I'm really saying, how dare you say that about me? How dare you make that remark about what I believe? How dare you attack my religion? If, if I recognize that they can say anything. People will say to me oftentimes, well, that, that really hurt. That just really hurt me. And I'll say, well, yes and no. Because on one hand, you can feel betrayed, but recognizing that someone can say something hurtful is part of being human. And the more you recognize that, the less easily hurt you are. But here's something, Bear, I really want to hammer with dads or men. Guy will be in my office, and I'll say, well, you realize your wife, your wife would like more affection, or your 15-year-old son, really, really, he would like his dad to show him some affection. Oh, that's not who I am. That's not me. Now, that is the biggest cowardly cop-out that a guy can say, because what he's saying is, I don't want to do it. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. What do you mean it's not you? What you're saying is, I don't feel like doing that, even though it would benefit someone else. I'll share with you a story, Bear. My 17-year-old son played basketball. Before the home games, I'd sit about five rows in the bleachers. I'd wait for the right time before the game started, and I'd go down on the floor. And he's hanging around with his buddies all there by the bench, and I'd grab him, I'd hug him, and I'd kiss him on the cheek. And I'd give him some encouragement, fatherly encouragement. I'd say, hey, Petey, try not to stink the joint out. And he mm -hmm. would just laugh. Mm -hmm. And later on, I asked him, Pete, does that embarrass you that I do that? And he said, would it matter, Dad? And I said, no. I said, <laughs> it wouldn't. And he told me later, Bear, that a couple of his teammates came up to him and said, I wish my dad would do that. Mm -hmm. So there you have teenage boys who have the reputation of don't touch me in public, don't mm -hmm. look at me in public, don't show affection to me in public. And Petey's got his old man in front of those full bleachers, mm -hmm. gone in front and hugging that boy. And he, to this day, he's 26. Mm -hmm. And he loved that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll tell you, I just found a letter from my dad yesterday. He wrote it in 2017 to me. He didn't give it to me. I think he gave it to my sister to give to me, and now he's gone. I just happened to find it. I saved a copy of it on my computer. I was just going through, oh, there's this letter, and I printed it out. And he just affirmed me and affirmed me and affirmed me and affirmed me in every, of, every area of my life. I could tell that he knew me and understood me and said how much he loved me. Of course, he said he loved my wife, Cindy. He said, you're lucky to have Cindy. Yeah, you you outkicked your coverage. He said that about, yeah, he said it about, ten, about every, it was supposed to be a letter to me, but about every two sentences, that's how wonderful Cindy is. But, um, you know, he affirmed me, you know, and... Uh, in who I am first, and then in what I do, and what I've done, you know. And so we, the love of a father, the affirmation of a father, especially to a young man, I think is so important. Of course it is to the young women too. We're talking with Dr. Ray Garendi, uh, author, uh, and also one of the, one of the, just the worst dad joke teller that I know, other than me, I failed today trying to tell that dad joke. But we'll be right back with Dr. Ray. This is Daniel Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up. Justice 
Standing before a judge on the wrong side of the law, that would be me back in 1968. Reckon I was 17 years old when I stood before Pacific County Superior Court Judge Herbert E. Wheeland, this time for stealing beer and underage drinking. Was my second time before the judge. Yep, I was in a fix of trouble, but wasn't smart enough to be scared. That is, until after being sentenced to probation, the judge with stern face and the solemn words leaned over the bench and intoned, Mr. Markham, if I see you in my court again, you will be going to the reformatory. Truth be known, I wasn't malicious, just stupid 17. Fortunately for me, at that time, certain offenses for juveniles were expunged from the public record if no further offenses were committed. Judge Whelan's stern warning had its intended effect. His form of justice, mixed with a bit of mercy, saved me from taking a serious bad turn in the fork of the road of life. Fast forward 17 years, I was a Pacific County Commissioner approving the budget for Judge Wheeland in his Superior Court. I sent the old judge a thank you note for giving me that one more chance back in 1968. Now the ultimate judge himself is God Almighty, and that'd be Jesus' daddy. Folks today don't like to think of God as judge. Fact is, true justice has fallen into disrepute. Yet the good book spells it out plain like. It tells us we we'll all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Woo-wee! That should pause you and me to do some serious contemplating. This is Daniel LeBoon Markham at CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you guys to go to our website and join the Man Cave. Uh, we have a non-Facebook community there. And uh, like just last week, we had our Man Cave. It's like a Zoom call, but it's something embedded in our website. So all the men get together. And usually we ask them to have a cigar or a manly beverage if they can. And we uh, talk story about the area of, of the uh, School of Manliness that we're, we're studying that week. We have three years of curriculum on the School of Manliness, and we go through it together as men, and uh, there's, like every week, there's things you can do, and then uh, and then we once, once or twice a month, we get together and we'll talk story, as we did last week. But what's really cool is the fathers are starting to lead their sons through the School of Manliness, and the, my book, 12 Rules for Manliness, is kind of part of that curriculum, but it's getting the fathers and the sons to really have a, a real discussion about real stuff. So we have Ray here today, Dr. Ray Garendi, uh, and... Uh, Tell me, what, how, do you, how does a father engage in real, what, what do you recommend a father do to engage in real conversation with a son? And how do you, how do you um, and what would you talk about? How would you make that happen? I'll use an example from marriage counseling, Bear. A couple will come in. The woman will know all the things that she's dissatisfied with or that make her unhappy. And I'll say to the guy, do you know why she thinks that? Much of the time they'll say, not really. 
Why not? Oh, I guess I just haven't, haven't really asked her about it. And that's what I say to guys. You got to know how your wife thinks about things. You got to know how your son is coming to these conclusions. If he comes home at age 16 and he says, you know, dad, I really don't understand why the church teaches what it does about homosexuality. I mean, if you love somebody, that's good. Love is good. And all of my friends don't understand it either, dad. So I really don't agree with the, what the church says. Now, the first impulse of a guy is, what, what are you talking about? Well, no, wait a minute, son. You got to get into his head. How'd you come to that conclusion? Who'd you been talking to? Well, what has he told you? So why do you think then the church should view it this way? In other mm -hmm. words, as a shrink, if somebody comes into my office, Bear, sometimes I hear the most rot gut stuff. And if I were to immediately say, what are you, crazy? Why are you thinking like that? That's nuts. It's going to blow up in your face, you big dummy. They'd walk out. I have to sit and try to figure out how they came to that viewpoint. So I had to ask a bunch of questions. And that's what I tell guys. If your wife thinks that you don't back her up in front of the kids, if your wife thinks that you don't stick up for her in front of her mother, you need to know why she thinks that. Mm. You need to ask her questions, mm. probe, think about it. Don't defend yourself. Just get inside her head as best you can. It is said, Bear, that many people would rather be understood than agreed with. And that's why mm. I tell dads. Mm. Try to understand why these kids are sucking in the culture's views. You can't just dispute them. You have to think, okay, let's 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 probe around here. Let's let's explore this. Let's get the kid to explain himself mm -hmm. so that when he has to verbalize it out loud, he may see what it sounds like, as opposed to me, the dad, telling him how bizarre it sounds. Mm. That's really one way. I, I gotta know. Even if I completely wildly disagree with my wife or my kid, I got to be able to say exactly why they think the way they do. It's the only way I'm going to be able to start moving them in a different direction. You know, I, I, as a dad, too, a couple things come to mind. One is I remember once saying to one of my children, there's nothing you can say to me. You can say anything you need to say to me, anything you want to say to me, you can say to me. There's nothing you can say to me that will make me stop loving you. And I remember I felt compelled to say that to one of my kids, and it was like within a week something really painful came out and, and, you know, that, that we, we didn't know about. And then uh, the other thing is I was with one of my kids. I was pedaling my bicycle across the United States. I was in San Diego and heading to Jacksonville, Florida. <clears throat> and my daughter um, rode along with me. She was the escort truck. Can you imagine five miles an hour across the United States? <laughs> but she had gotten into the Rastafari thing and very dedicated into this false religion, this really cultish type false religion. And what I did is I just asked her questions, like really sincerely trying to understand, oh, so that's why, and why, and what about this? And just really listened and listened and listened. And I remember by the time we got to New Mexico, she called one of her friends, because she was living there, and get down here, you gotta get out of this religion. And I hadn't said a thing to her. And. Uh, they had this thing called where the, all the women lived together and it was just so male chauvinistic religion. But she, by the time we got to Texas, she was out of that religion, you know, and it was not for me persuading her in any way, just her listening to her own thoughts and how she would try to communicate, you know, what she really believed. So it's really good, you know, my, you know what happens with me with Cindy, my wife, she'll have something really important to tell me and she wants to tell me all of her feelings and this happened and then, I, then this and, all of this, and I just, just get to the point. So, <laughs> so wrong. It's so wrong. When we're sailing the boat, I'll go like, you know, if you need to, if you need me to raise the main sheet, then tell me. But, but otherwise, what a terrible thing to say. Just get to the point. Sometimes I think something bad's coming, so I want, I want to know the ending and then tell me the rest. But really have to work on, on listening to our children, drawing them out and listening to our spouses. In most of human history, Bear, it was easy for us to be, it was easier for us to be men because our duties were rather uh, valuable. We protected from, from harm. We built things. We killed food. 
I mean, we, we did the things that would now be considered a man's man, man, man type stuff, but the women don't need this now anymore. They have shelter. They're not really in any danger from marauding tribes. They don't have to kill their food. They just drive down to the store. So a lot of the stuff that was a man's role in most of human history mm. is gone. Mm. The women who are naturally more communicative, generally more in touch with their feelings, more likely to pick up on social cues, look yes, at us yes, and, and, yes. They, and they hope that we would be like that. And it's harder for us to do that. So I tell the guys, we may not be naturally as communicative as the women. They're just better at it than we are. All right. That's but true. At least you can find out why they think the way they think. You you no longer go out and kill food. You no longer built that house. Okay. She doesn't need you for those things. One time my wife was on the phone with four or five women from church. And after she got off, she said, Ray, I think they would prefer to be married to a woman who could lift heavy things and open jars. <laughs> and what she was saying was the women were getting frustrated at us guys because we weren't as naturally communicative. And I tell the guys, it doesn't come natural. So what you got to do is it's easy enough to get her to talk. Let's ask a few questions show some interest even though your insides are churning at what you're hearing and you know I, it's so i consider it such an honor when my wife talks to me there are times when i think oh there's something urgent coming up just get to the point and then we'll do the backfill but i, I find myself when we, we go out and have our starbucks coffee in the afternoon we take a long walk and we get that nice cold starbucks and i find that's some of the best quiet time for us and i just find myself leaning in and she's talking to me She's telling me about her heart. It's so beautiful, you know. Well, I've had the same experience. Uh, your wife will call me and she'll tell me all about you, and I'll ask her questions. Why do you think that about you? Well, you know, I've had the same experience. <laughs> that's so funny. But um, there is something about the way a man loves his wife that's very important as far as his fatherhood. We've talked about this before. You mentioned earlier protecting the wife from the children. What does that mean? I have something I call. Take a bullet for your wife, Bear. Wow. <laughs> it means this. <clears throat> if the guy says to his wife, I'll tell you what. If the kids are giving you grief because they don't like a decision that you're making about them, permission, uh, expectation, you say to them, go talk to dad. This is his idea. Hmm. Now that'll pull the plug on that one. Yeah, even though you don't even know about it, when they come and say, "Hey, exactly. mommy, yeah, mommy yeah. said this." Few, yeah, the first few times my wife said that to me, I went, "What? It is? What do you mean? Oh, I don't know anything about that." No, you got to say, "Yeah, it is my idea." And then later on, you find out what your idea was. Right. But here's another one too, you, and I see this. All even the time. if you disagree with what she's right. saying, you have to. You have to with those children. You have to be in agreement. Well, yeah. here's here's a big one. This is really a big well, one. Well, wait, wait. Can we come back to this? Because okay. if it's going to be a big one, I don't want to interrupt you. We're talking with Dr. Ray Garendi, who is just one of the – I just love it whenever I ch have a chance to be with you, Ray. Uh, we're going to come back and find out about the big one he's going to tell us about. Tell us again w what your website is. DRRAY.com. DrRay.com. The books are there. They are uh, discounted, and they're signed. How many books are there these days? Eighteen. 18. Oh, wow. Okay. But hey, you know, Bear, I learned the secret to writing a lot of books. Yeah. You can't worry about them being very good. That's true. That's true. Well, you know, they, you know for, my, for me, I love the fact there's, that there's deadlines where I would never finish them. Not because I, I'm not working really hard, but I always think I could say one more thing or change one more thing. But we'll be right back with my good friend, Dr. Ray. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. 
Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Baron Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're with our friend, Dr. Ray Garendi. I forgot to ask you, I really always like to make a point to ask you during the winter while I'm here in Waikiki, what's the weather like where you are? 40 degrees right now and sunny, which is rare for Ohio. We are one of the cloudiest places in the United States. We have approximately 50, 60 days of pure sunlight per year. So if you want to be a counselor in Focus on working with depressed people. You can That's do exactly you can right. you can do a big business there. What you were, but you were, I will tell you, our houses are a lot cheaper than yours down there in Hawaii. We just have a little. We make them out of palm branches down here. We just live <laughs> on the beach. We don't even need a house. So so tell us now. You were about to tell us the big one. You yes. Remember, yeah. One of the things that we guys are guilty of, and our wives hate this, and our kids love it. We hold court. If we hear there's a disagreement, a bicker match between mom and daughter, mom and kid, we eventually get up off the barca lounger because the What the is a barca lounger, Ray? Well, I I've, I've read about it. My grandfather told me about it, Bear. Okay. It's a big old so, lounge. Okay. We get in there and we hold court. We try yeah. to figure out who said what, who's wrong, who's not wrong, what mom should do, what mom should say, what kids should say. No, 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 no. I tell guys, next time you hear your wife locked into a battle with a kid, you don't think to yourself, I close my eyes, I can't tell which one of them's a 12 year old. You go in there and you protect that woman. You tell that child, that's not just your mom you're talking to that way, that's my wife. Now you go to your room. I'm gonna find out what she wants me to do about this. Yeah, you, you gotta you gotta find out first. You can't just protect without permission. Mm -hmm. Get get your uh, get mm -hmm. your wife to sign something from your attorney, <laughs> and then you tell your wife and that daughter. And I'm gonna do more. And the, I I can't tell you how many women in therapy will tell me how good they feel when their husbands protect them like that. Mm -hmm. And don't come in there trying to dig through who's most wrong, trying to, trying to show that wife is equal to daughter in this whole incident here. Yes, mom's style may be bad. It could be wordy, it could be nagging, it could be emotional, but she's still mom. She still has God-given authority. And when dad's authority backs up mom's, then mom will be very affectionate toward dad. You know, Bear, sometimes mm -hmm. I used to give my boys a couple bucks. Go down and give your mother grief. I'll be right down. <laughs> so you could be the hero. Yeah, right. you know, yeah, you know there's a, there is that um, interesting story in the Bible of the centurion. He asked Jesus to heal his servant. And Jesus said, I'm, I'm on my way. Let's go. And he goes, no, no, it's not, it, it's not necessary that you should enter under my roof. Just say the word and my servant shall be healed. And then he said these words, 
for I am a man under authority, and I have m men under me. He's a centurion, 100 men. For I say to one, go, and he goes, and I say to another one, come, and he comes. And this is what Jesus said about a non-Jewish guy. Lo, I have not seen such great faith in all of Israel. He was a man that understood authority. He, and he was under authority, and so his men see that he's under authority, and so they respect his authority. In the household, we, 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 uh, we, it, it's a humbling thing for a man to be under God's authority. But when the wife sees that he's under authority and the children see that, that the, the husband and wife are submitted to the Lord, then God backs them up. And it, so it takes, it takes real faith. I remember once I was leading a, a youth group, and I told the kids, because I, I didn't know their parents. It was just kind of a Bible study, and all kinds of kids were coming that weren't going to the church. And I said, you know, if, you're, if, you, if your parents don't know you're coming to this youth group, or they know you're coming but they don't want you to, then you need to obey them. And they were like, what? I'm following Jesus by coming here. And I, I, uh, one of those kids went home and told, had done that. He told the parent, I know you don't want me to go, but I, I've been going. I just want to tell you I'm sorry. And they go, well, what have you been learning? Well, the guy told us, if you don't want us to come here, we shouldn't, that we should obey you. <laughs> and they said, I'll be driving you from now on. There but you go. But there's something about that, that chain of, um, uh, it's really a chain of command that, that, that the dignity that, that God gives each of our role. But if you're a person, if you're a father, and you're saying, and you want to lay the law down, but they can see that you're a hypocrite, that you're, they don't see you praying in the morning, they, don't, they see you making bad decisions, what you're watching on TV, you know, or you're not, you, you don't spend, invest time with them, um, you know, you're going to lose them. Well, okay, I want to ask you another question. I want to ask you another question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, uh, parents of adult children, what do you tell them? There's a phenomenon going on out there, Bear, that I believe has never happened in human history. Mm. And that is so many young adults are leaving the faith that they were raised in. That is now almost the norm. And what happens is the parents feel terribly, terribly guilty. Where did we go wrong? Maybe I should have prayed the rosary in Aramaic, kneeling on broken glass instead of sitting on the couch. They second guess everything about what they did. And they tried hard. They, these, these are not neglectful, abusive parents. So Bear, you help me, you help me with this exercise, okay? This is one exercise I do to take guilt away from parents. I tell them, I will prove to you logically that your days of beating yourself up are over. Hmm. Are you ready? You gonna help me out, Bear? Yeah. Okay, just answer yes or no to these questions. Is there a God? Yes. Is Christ God? Yes. Was he sinless? Yes. Could he perform miracles? Yes. Did he have a perfect understanding of human nature? <laughs> yes. Could he get most people to follow him? No. Ha ha! So, I tell these parents, you think you're better at this than the God-man. Our Lord mm. himself couldn't get most people to follow him. And yet we kind of think there's some spiritual formula that we missed. And somehow, if we would have done it better, our children would have been Mother Teresa and St. John Bosco. You know what you're, I tell mm -hmm. folks? Yeah. You, Here, I got 10 grown kids. Some of them are going to serve the church. Some of them probably going to serve time, you know? Yeah. You don't have St. John Bosco in your family like I do? <laughs> Mr. John Bosco is as close as I get. <laughs> no, but there is something about that. And I find myself as a father just always thinking, I just got to give him one more word of advice. I just got to challenge him. I no, gotta, you know, you got to know when to shut your mouth. That was, I, I just, I, I, yeah, yeah. When you read the cues, and the more you're talking, the more they're moving away, you got to stop because you're driven to try to fix it. Because whatever you fell short on that makes this kid the way he is, you got to make it right. And that, that pushes you into doing things that are not actually helping anymore, mm -hmm. it's making mm -hmm. it worse. Yeah. At some point, we have to just, like you say, hand, hand them over to the Lord. And to the, but I love my kids so much. But part of loving them is saying, okay, you've got that. Well, my son Joshua and I, we learned to fly together. Uh, we took our pilot license training together. I remember being in the airplane, and the first time the instructor tells me to put my hands on the on the the, the wheel, and he says, he says to me, you've got the plane. And then I have to say back to him, I've got the plane. And then he says, you've got the plane. And then he, then I, you got to let the kid fly the plane, you know? Okay, you got to let them take the hand off. It's like a 
quarterback that doesn't give a solid handoff. And I'm, I'm, I think that's the most – my greatest failing in life is that I just always – I think I can help them. I think I can help them do better. I think I can give them better trajectory. And I look at their lives, and they're so they're strong Christians. They love the Lord, you know. And I just I got to let them fly. You also have to ask yourself, Bear, where were you when you were their age? Actually, I was a pretty good kid. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you were you were a surf champion. No, well, I'll, I'll, no, I'll just were. tell you, I was I was so such a good kid that I was naive. Uh, as I grew up and even to my young adult, I didn't drink till I think, uh, you know, when I was after I really gave my life to the Lord when I was 19. You know, I just I just was kind of that kind of guy everyone hates because he's such a, <laughs> he's such a goody two shoes. But that left me really naive about what my kids were up to. <laughs> you know, they told me later on, Dad, did you know? And I go, you did what? You know, so it left me kind of unprepared. Dr. Ray, you got a finishing uh, word of advice for us as we come to close. We got about a minute. A man's authority comes from God, and as long as God puts the guardrails on his authority to be used properly, he doesn't have to worry about being toxic in his masculinity. He doesn't have to worry about being a jackbooted thug of a father. His authority is calm, quiet, and strong. He's a, he's a good cowboy. Oh, I love How's it. How's that a plug for your book there? I think it's just great. And I, I, I suddenly I pictured a cowboy riding a horse on a bork or whatever that is you call that. <laughs> but Dr. Ray's, uh, uh, you can find him at drray.com, and you can find my book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, based on the life of Dr. Ray right here. And uh, until next time, uh, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. And my wife always likes me to make the sign of the cross in Hawaiian. Thank you, Dr. Ray, for being here. Thanks, Bear. Ake makua, ke keki, ame ke ohana hemalele. In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wilding Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wilding Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. Ooh.